My name is Adriana, and this is Many Roads, No Rules. I don't plan ahead what road I will take next, because I want those roads to find me, so I find myself. Please join me on this new adventure. Good afternoon, how are you? I am here in Ehrenberg, which is just a huge amount of desert between Blythe, California and Quartzsite, Arizona. So I am here in Quartzsite actually, ready for the RTR, which I am going to uh, report to you. But I am camping uh, here in Ehrenberg, which happens to be a huge extension of uh, nothing, just desert. And I was very happy when I found these little trees. Uh, I don't know if they qualify as trees because they are just overgrown bushes or very small trees. I am sure if you plant any of these in a regular garden with a lot of water, they probably grow very high. But here in the desert, everything adapts to the conditions of the desert. And, and that is why I am here by the trees, because it is a balmy 70 day, uh, which I am not complaining about. In, in centigrade, it's almost 20 degrees but it feels really hot here in the desert. If you're at this, in, I mean, in the sun, it feels really hot. So, but this is a delightful place. If you're coming this way uh, to the border of Arizona, California, Quartzsite, just know that it is just amazing how much desert there is here and uh, how far far away you are from anybody else to the point that if someone comes to camp near you you go like okay why are you here you know that kind of thing because it is amazing how much space there is so the reason why i mentioned that is i didn't know the area i thought Ehrenberg was a town, and so far I think it is just land, and it's so much land. I can see far away, but far, far away from me, here and there and everywhere, lots of campers in big campers, big rigs, schoolies, ambulances, minivans, all sorts of vehicles, and they are all camped so spread out that nobody bothers anyone. Occasionally you see a, an ATV and we may hear one, occasionally one drives by. I am very happy to be here in Ehrenberg. It is a for sure destination if you want to camp on your own. I, I am a loner by definition. I like people, I am an, kind of an extrovert. Um, I found one day there was this definition that either you are an introvert or an extrovert. Well, apparently there is a midpoint, which is the ambivert, that can be totally extroverted, but sometimes they need to be alone to rebuild their energy. And I find myself there. I am an ambivert. Now you know something else about me. Before coming here, and this is the topic of the day, I hope you like it because I enjoyed it so much. I was in uh, Lake Havasu, ready to come here. From Lake Havasu to Quartzsite, you have about an hour and a half or so hour of 15 minutes, something like that. And I thought, before I go south, 
I am going to go to old man that is not far away. It's about 20 minutes or so. I never prepare myself for uh, these type of uh, visits to different places. I think I told you that. That is why part of the name of the, the channel is that. No rules, no plans. Because I find that stressful. When I get to a place, I enjoy it for what I see, for what I find there. But if I prepare beforehand, and I know there is something that I may be interested in, and then I, when I go there, it's closed, or I don't find it, or something like that, that I find very stressful. So, I don't prepare myself. I just went to old men. And I was pleasantly surprised, because t in order to get to old men, I had to drive 25 miles along Road 66, the famous historic Road 66. And then I understood why a highway was, was needed instead of that one, because Road 66 is very narrow, just one way each direction, and uh, very long and windy, like the song says, the long and winding road. This is very windy and uh, lots of dips that we are learning. It's the common thing here. They actually needed a highway. I don't understand how people drove Road 66 um, comfortably because it is not comfortable with those big Thunderbirds or those big cars. I don't know how they did it. But in any case, it's a beautiful drive. The scenery is just amazing. I stayed there one night in the desert there and I came across the jumping choyas, which I didn't know what they were. And I found them beautiful. So I, I approached to take a photo and then I learned what the jumping choyas are. The safe distance is at least three feet. Do not go closer because the natural way of, for that plant to reproduce is to detect that someone is coming or an animal or something. And those seeds, they break loose and they actually jump and a stick, a stick to you. So, and they are, the thorns are really tough and they actually go in your skin. So be careful with jumping joyous, um, do your research, just know this is what they look like. And uh, now you know. So, but after I drove uh, Road 66, I got to the town of Oatman, which I had seen many videos about it, but it's always fascinating to be there. It was a mining town and then it was abandoned and now it's a touristic attraction. So why the name Oatman? Well, in that search for a life in the West, Many people from the East would take that very dangerous journey going from East to West. And you know some of those stories. The Oatman family with their party, they were from Illinois and they were crossing the desert going West. That was 1851. They were attacked by Tolkipayas Indians. I'm not sure if I pronounced it correctly. Tolkipayas was the natives that attacked them and they killed everybody in their party. Um, and they kept Olive, who was a teenager, and her younger sister and they took them with them. They kidnapped 
them. Her brother was left because they, they thought he was dead. They left him there and he was actually not dead. So he tried to uh, get her back for years. But in any case, she was with that tribe for a year or so. And then she was traded or sold to the Mojaves. And she actually married a Mojave. And apparently she had Mojave children. The, the Mojaves tattooed her chin as in the tradition of the, uh, the tribe. So that tells me that maybe they accepted her as one of their clan, their tribe. But it was reported later that she never liked the Mojaves. She never liked, accepted them back. So four years later, she was released in Fort Yuma, south of here. In 1863, Johnny Moss found gold in the Black Mountains. So he staked some claims here and there. And the main two claims, he named them after him. So one of them was the Moss claim. And the other one, in honor to Olive, so that one was named Oatman, because in those years, the news of her uh, coming back to society and everything, that was a very popular story. So he named one of his claims Oatman, and that is where the town is now. of the town, apparently, is the burros. And those burros were used in the mines inside to pull the carts out or outside to bring groceries to the miners and all those kind of things. And when the mines were closed, those burros didn't have any other use. So they were released and they adapted and they thrived. And those burros are beautiful and they live there. And they are still wild animals, so they might bite you or kick you, so be careful. But in any case, just remember you can be there, have a great time, buy some food for the burros and feed the burros. It is a beautiful town, and I am sure. I am going to go again if I am in the vicinity of the of the town of Oldman. I am going to go again and have lunch again somewhere there because it's a 
beautiful town. I'm having a rough week. I've been here all week waiting for a Satan's coach to show up. Found me one yesterday, showed up right there. <laughs> but I didn't get to rob him. Turns out I got stuck in the outhouse over there. <laughs> That's terrible. What are you laughing about? That was not funny at all. <laughs> got in there, I couldn't get out. There wasn't no toilet paper. Somebody was shouting and that stuff. Anyway, I got out. Had to ruin a good pair of socks to get out of there. And I got out. That stagecoach was gone. So, I figured he must have put the gold over in the bank. Although I'm not too sure about the bank. Because they shut that bank down for seven months a couple years ago. All because of a beer. I thought Corona was pretty good beer. <laughs> anyway, they shut it down, but it's open now. So, I gotta get me up the courage to go rob me a bank. I don't really like banks. I'm out of a box. At least in the States, coach, you're out in the open. I'm a bank robber. I'm a bank robber. Are you now? We am. You're robbing a bank. Hey. What? You ever robbed a bank before? Well, no, but I have robbed a piggy bank. Does that count? Again, it doesn't have to work for bank. It well, sure does. Look. What? You see, new to the game, you ain't even shaving yet. But I tell you what, you need to be careful. Don't go to hell and everybody you're a bank robber until after you robbed the bank. Well, why not? Because they're going to shoot at you before you can get through the door. Well, I didn't think about that. Well, thanks for the advice, Dylan. Go ahead and have some fun. I ain't seen anybody get shot in a while. All right. <laughs> you weren't talking about me, was you? I ain't going to be shooting me. Yeah, I guess 
I hope if you go, I hope you enjoy Road 66, I hope you enjoy the food there, the town, and you take some beautiful photos, and those memories are going to last you forever. If you liked this video, please give me a thumbs up, share the video with a friend that maybe like Boros, and uh, please subscribe to the channel if you're new. And I'll see you very soon with another video.